I have made similar videos earlier as well. Yet, I felt a need for making a specific video on why study at ISI Masters in Economics. So the curriculum at ISI Masters of Economics essentially is known as Masters of Science in Quantitative Economics. So what is quantitative? It's essentially dealing with numbers and analytics. And economics, you very well know what it is. So you have you get a master's in economics, which deals with analytics, something like that. Now, this gives you a fair bit of an idea of what to expect from this course. The course revolves around statistical and mathematical tools for you so that you can carry your economics research at a postgrad or a PhD level or even further than that. So most people who come to this master's program, they somehow have an inner desire to further their economics education and sometimes they pursue a PhD. And midway in the course, a few of the people decide to get on to the job market and uh, carry on with the tools which they have gained in the course in a professional setting. And most of that is in risk management or in finance or in some kind of a data science or analytics kind of field. And these days as data science and AIML is quite popular in the industry, a lot of MSQE students get into those roles. A lot of people think that this will give them an entry into quantitative finance. But this decision might not be the best for you if you're thinking of quantitative finance. Because economics and finance are related, but still they are not the same. Plus, quantitative finance is not what it really sounds like. Quantitative finance has a lot of programming. So, a lot of people who are in quantitative finance might be just software engineers or they might be just in the risk department of banks. So that's legit quantitative finance, but most people who think of quantitative finance in their undergrad or class 11, 12 or in their school days or let's say in their early teens, they think quantitative finance as people who are working in finance, buying and selling assets in the financial markets and gaining money out of it. And they do it algorithmically, they do it mathematically, they have systems. That is what excites them, that they will be able to use their mathematics skills to do some kind of a financial work. But that's not really uh, the reality. Most of uh, real quant finance roles, which people have in their mind in the, in the teenage or in the early life, is very few and a lot of people who do MBA in finance get them or a lot of people who do a PhD in finance get them or sometimes even PhD in physics or some kind of an analytical field. But after you do a master's in economics from India, the chances of you landing into that kind of a quant finance role is very limited. Having said that, there is a specific kind of quantitative finance role which you might get. Those are your risk roles. When I say risk role, what I'm talking about is financial risk. And when I talk about financial risk, what I'm talking about is the positions in a lot of banks and consulting companies which help banks to uh, maintain their regulatory models or risk models. So these models are statistical in nature and people are needed who are either uh, having skills in statistics or maths or economics or have some kind of an engineering background. Let's say you think of PhD. If you're thinking of PhD, MSQE is a very great course for you because it will give you ultimate finishing for a PhD education or I would say a PhD career. Think of MSQE as a very intensive course and if your first priority is a PhD, then MSQE is the best. If you want to get into some kind of a risk role or a data science role or analytics role, then also it's great.